TV, are you there? Oh, Daryl, can you hear us? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Daryl. So I guess we'll begin, Joanne? Yes, we're ready. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regularly scheduled planning board meeting for May the 13th, 2021. Before we do anything, I'm going to read the governor's order related to the electronic meetings. Under the right to know law meeting rules, as chair of the Goffstown Planning Board, due to the COVID-19 outbreak, and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is here to confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possibilities by video or other electronic means. The planning board is utilizing a telephone conference line for this electronic meeting. The public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, Participate in this meeting through dialing the following telephone number, 7, uh, 603 area code 766-5646 and using the participant code 785645 followed by the pound sign. The town previously gave notice to the public of how to access this meeting using the available telephone number with the posted agenda. If anybody has a problem with telephone access, Please call 603. Uh, that's not the correct number, 5,000. What's the correct number, Joanne? That's, the correct number is 603-488-6783. In the event the public is unable, to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at a later time. Please note that all votes so taken during this meeting will be done by roll call vote. We'll start the meeting by taking our roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Uh, we'll begin with Phil. Yep, I'm here, I'm alone. Thank you, Phil. Um, who else is with us tonight um, from the regular board members, Joanne? So we have Barbara. Bob, uh, okay. Collins. Barbara, Barbara Griffin. She's muted. I'm here alone Thank in the back room. You. Thank you, Barbara. Who else, Joanne, is from a regular board members? We have Collins. Uh, yeah, he's present. Also, I'm alone in the room. We have Jim. I'm here. Jim Raymond. Um, and then we have yourself. Right. And then we have the two alternates, Gail and David. All right, Gail Lebrecht, please. Gail Lebrecht, alternate and recording secretary, and I'm alone in the room. And Dave. And I'm Dave Pierce. I'm an alternate. I'm alone in the room. Thank you. Because we do not have a full board tonight, Gail and David will both be voting on issues this evening, please. Okay. Um, the first item on our agenda tonight is the minutes of April 22nd, 2021. Any, any corrections or Motion changes? And a motion to approve the minutes by Phil DeBanza. Do I have a second? I second it, Mr. Chairman. Jim seconded it. Is there any discussion on the motion? Call the roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Paul? Yes. yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. And the chair votes yes, so the minutes are passed unanimously. Um, 
Joanne, are we going to discuss uh, action item number two or move that move that out to when we have a further discussion? We can move that to when we have a further discussion down at the end of the agenda. Thank you. Um, there's a request from Patty Gale for the board to vote to allow the planning board chairman to sign the CIP appointment papers on behalf of the full board while we are still meeting remotely. Action needed. Um, I'll open that up to discussion from the board members. Mr. Chair, I make that motion. Yeah, I'll second it. It's Phil. Motion. Motion's been made by J Jim and seconded by Phil. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we will call for a roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. Passes. I uh, chair votes yes. All right, the fourth item on action items is um, a request for an acceptance of a cash surety in the amount of 110000 for General Slopes. Uh, Joanne, could you please give us the information on that? Uh, yes, so we've been working with the the new owners and the contractor um, trying to work down the list of to do items prior to these um, receive prior to receipt of the certificate of occupancy and one of the items that they cannot um, accomplish at this time is the final hydro seating so Sarah um, received information from them as far as delaying that until later on at the end of the month. They have to do a few different soil testings and soil preparation procedures before they can go ahead with the final um, solution that they've come up with. And in your packet, or I'm sorry, attached to the meeting agenda was the amount and what those items will cost. There's also a, a memo from Sarah um, where she's agreeing to this and Sarah is on the line if you have any questions and um, the vice president of go light Andrew can I'm going to make a mess of this name Kat Katania um, is also online uh, and he can also answer any questions that you may have so I guess the first uh, thing is for Sarah if you identify yourself and give us your uh, your report please uh, Sarah Wardy, town engineer. Um, so they had hydro seeding scheduled um, for the unstabilized areas, and then we got a snowstorm. So my understanding is now this week the unstabilized areas have been seeded or will be seeded in the next few days. The remaining item was uh, the rest of the ground cover for the site, which they temporarily stabilized with sump grindings, which was okayed by New Hampshire DES as part of their AOT permit. They have to permanently stabilize the area, which AOT and Town of Gosstown have agreed means seeding it. So for that process, they are going to till the sump grindings into the soil apply lime and then the seeding and that is a pretty lengthy process so they plan to get started even as early as next week but it will take a little time plus they're going to do testing throughout it to make sure the ground temperature is up to at least 60 degrees which i guess is needed for grass growth and just to make sure the conditions are optimal so they only have to seed once and the recommended amount you you concur with the recommended amount for the surety? Yes. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, board members, you have any questions for Sarah or staff? I move that we accept the uh, post uh, surety based on Sarah's presentation. It's Jim. Been a motion by Jim to accept the surety with the um, recommendation from the town engineer. Any one second that? Yeah, I'll second it. 
Second by Phil. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote on the motion to accept the surety in the amount of $110,000. Uh, Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Motion passes, so we will accept the surety. Um, so, will Joanne, are you going to notify the um, Gentle Slope Solar, or is that, or is, will Sarah be responsible to notify them? Uh, they're actually online with us right now. So. Okay, so, so they heard what was going on. Yes. Great. Is there any need to have them speak, or are we concluded here right now, Joanne? Andy, did you want to say anything? Uh, no, no, thank you. Just thanks very much to the board for um, considering the surety, and um, we hope to conclude uh, final construction activities on the project in the next week and bring the site online shortly. So thanks very much for your help. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. And question for Sarah. Um, everything has to be um, stabilized because it has to be actually growing, right? This is not just because the stuff is done. It actually has to be germinated and you have to see this, this grass growing, Sarah? Uh, correct. One of the things that I was recommending because it is such a large sum that we are holding is um, partial reductions throughout a reduction of 30, I think 30 percent. Um, mm -hmm. Once it, I, I should pull up the number. I read it. It's but, in your note. Yep. So a reduction, once it has been seeded, I will go out and do an inspection. Then another reduction for a more significant amount once the grass has grown and it all looks good and then a final reduction once um the temporary erosion control measures have been removed okay thank you sir and thank if you, i sir. could just add um before they go ahead and do this i've asked for verification from aot just to make sure that they are okay with leaving the stump grindings on there and mixing it with the lime. So I'm waiting to hear back from them. Okay, thank you. Question, Tim. Uh, hey, Tim. Uh, Tim. Phil, Collis spoke first. Can I hear from Collis, please, Phil? Um, yep. Sarah, when did you say they're going to begin? I'm sorry. And the, re the reason. Yep. Go ahead. And the reason I'm asking is because this is a prime seeding and growing season every every day we lose now you know is a problem so they need to get moving uh with with some uh haste my understanding is that they are starting the tilling operations as early as next week um the last time they took a soil temperature sample it was it was a little low i think it was 47 degrees the applicant said he was starting next week, and I concur that the temperature is low. In the morning, it's still chilly out there. Yeah, it is. Hmm. All right, thank you. Um, it seems like there's quite a process. So with them starting next week, then I would expect that the seed will be down probably within the next month. Maybe Andy can kind of give us an idea of that timeline. Yeah, absolutely. So the, I think the tilling is supposed to start here at the end of the week where they're incorporating some of the stump grindings into the soil now is determined um, as kind of the, the best method for maintaining erosion control, but also still being able to seed. And we've instructed the contractor that the seeding needs to begin this month and no later than the end of the month, because we're concerned that while temperatures have been low, that they could get too high and then that creates a problem. So we want the work to get done this month. Okay, uh, Phil Devanza, did you want to speak? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, for a clarification and just uh, confirm it with Sarah, the way it's written, the 30% reimbursable upon the seeding and then 50% reimbursable upon successful. But that 50% is a 50 of the total and not a 50 of the remaining. When you get to the third Correct. one, which is the yeah. five, 20. Exactly. Okay. Just, just for clarification, just so that there's no confusion that that 50% means half of what's remaining being held. And that those numbers were totally just my brainstorming, trying to like 
proportionally think of the work. So if you guys have any suggestions for that, um, that doesn't even need to be, we could even cross that out from my memo um, because each time we request a reduction, I will be coming back to the planning board to ask permission and give a report of the status. Okay. Well, it was in, it was in your report and your report was seems to be accepted by the majority of the members so I would say the report should stand Sarah okay thank you all right um so we're done with this item right now Joanne yes thank you all right under we have no old business for this evening but we do have new business map 16 lot 28 this is a completeness review subdivision plan review hearing for two lots 43 Pershing Street, Toby and Renee Gamash. Could you please give us the rundown, please, Joanne? Um, yes. As the chair stated, this is on Pershing Street in Pennardville in a residential area. And the owner currently owns one larger lot. And they would like to subdivide uh, to do a two lot subdivision creation, uh, which would cause the creation of a new lot for a residential home. Um, so Joe Wickert should be on the line with us. Yep. Joe, are you there? I am. Okay. Yep. Um, the, uh, the property is serviced by both public water and public sewer, and the applicant did receive a variance from a few of the lot frontages for both lots, inadequate lot width for both lots, and an inadequate frontage. Um, also, they received a variance for the shed that is currently shown on the proposed lot 28-1. Um, for the setbacks for that shed, it, it is sitting in the setbacks building and if the the way the variance reads is if they go and uh, remove that shed someday and build a new shed, the new shed would have to meet the setback requirements. Okay, thank you, Joanne. Does any board members have any questions for Joanne before we open this? Oh, um, Joanne, could you tell if there was waivers requested? Yes, there are three waivers requested. And the application is complete and staff recommends it does not have regional impact. I, Mr. Chair, I move that we, on the basis of Joanne's presentation, we find mm -hmm. the application complete, accept it for hearing, find no regional impact, uh, but the acceptance is um, subject to any waiver requirements that we will address when we get to the substantive portion. Motion's been made by Jim to find that this is complete and ready to review with the rest of the standard language. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Jim. Second. Carlos. Carlos seconded. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing no, no discussion, I will call for a roll call vote on the motion to find complete. Uh, Phil? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. Yes. Paulus. Yes. Jim. Yes. Gail. Gail. Yes. Thank you, uh, David. <clears throat> yes. And the chair votes yes. Okay. Uh, so. So now I'm going to go back to what I started with. There any to the uh, any of the board members have any questions for Joanne or staff before we begin this hearing? All right, seeing none, Joanne, would you invite uh, Joe to identify himself and join the meeting? Yes, Joe is on the screen. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, Joanne, do you want me to present? Because uh, I just need to be allowed to uh, share. Yes. Um. <laughs> Does that give you permission now? Uh, no, it's still saying only meeting organizers and presenters can share. 
Joe, is that so you can put a plan up? Yes. It well, everybody, says, re everybody received a plan in the packet. Does everyone have their plan available so in case Joe can't share? That one of the, Mr. Chair, one of the points of these meetings is for the public to be able to observe. You need to be able to get okay. the plan up. I think, right. Joanne, I think I, I just got it, Joanne. Now I'm a, uh, I'm, uh, a presenter. Okay. Thank you, Barbara, for that. I forgot. All right. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you can see the plan now. Yes. Okay. So uh, good evening. I'm Joe Wicker, and I'm here tonight on behalf of um, Toby and Renee Gamash. Uh, the Gamash is on lot 28 on tax map 16. Uh, it's their residence, which is 43 Pershing Street. Uh, as configured, there's uh, approximately 167.9 feet of frontage and uh, 18,806 the seven square feet of area. So it, the, you know, one of the unique things about this lot is uh, this is an old track line, this uh, stone wall. So instead of being rectangular, it's got a little, I don't know what that is, trapezoid shape to it. Um, so we have, uh, you know, we were here under the 20,000 square feet total. Um, so this property is owned R2. In the R2 district, we need uh, 100 feet of frontage and 10,000 square feet of area. As Joanne mentioned, we received variances. Uh, the variances were for on the existing lot, we have 88.67 feet of frontage and 88,600 square, I'm sorry, 8,867 square feet of area. On the new lot, we have 79.19 feet of frontage in 10,000 feet, uh, 10,000 square feet. Uh, if you look to the top of the uh, top of the plan, uh, I can try to blow it up here. So you can see the buildable area table. So each lot has a small uh, steep slope area that that's been subtracted out. So uh, lot 28, the lot with the house will actually have um, 8,732 square feet or 0.2 acres. And uh, the new lot would have uh, 9,685 square feet or uh, 0.22 acres. So uh, Joanne also mentioned that, you know, the existing house is serviced by municipal sewer water. So the sewer line is shown, this is the approximate sewer connection into the house, which is on the east side. Uh, the water connection is on the west side of the house. Uh, there is an existing sewer and water line in Pershing Street for the entire frontage. Um, we are proposing to create the one new building lot. That building lot would be serviced by municipal sewer and water. Uh, we are asking for three waivers. We're asking for waivers on wetlands delineation. Uh, we went out to the site and there were no, uh, no visible wetlands. It's a, you know, city lot type of situation. So, um, where there's nothing visible or questionable, we usually ask for that waiver. And then we ask for uh, waivers on the uh, stormwater management plan and the erosion control standards. Uh, in addition to the reasonings in the application for why we're asking for those waivers, what we have tried to do is what we've done previously is we've added some uh, standard erosion control notes so that any, uh, any development of the lot would be aware of uh, how, how they should sequence it. Um, you know, just standard things, uh, uh, use, uh, silt fence and, and check it after storms, things like that. Nothing, uh, you know, usual practices. So um, we had, uh, Joanne had passed on the staff report to us. So we have that uh, in a DPW had, um, I think planning comments were uh, the, the uh, stockade fence uh, surrounding a portion of 28, which is this lot here encroaches onto lot 46. Um, that, that fence has been there. The applicant hadn't had any, uh, hasn't had any intention to, to change that. So that's what our hope would be. Uh, DPW had uh, offered uh, some comments. They want us to show a temporary benchmark on the plan, which is fine. Uh, they want us to show the proposed driveway location. And I talked to Sarah regarding that. Uh, her concern was because we have reduced frontage, she just wants to make sure that 
the lot could sustain uh, a driveway. And so I believe the requirement is you need a 40 foot separation from uh, any driveway. And I think it's either 10 or 15 feet off the lot line. So this driveway here is um, approximately 25 feet off the new lot line. So on if we were to locate the driveway on the east side of the new lot, should it be approved, it would be roughly at the building setback line. That would be a 40 foot separation from here. If we assumed a 12 foot wide driveway, uh, that would still leave us 40 feet to uh, the new, uh, to the to the exterior corner. Um, let me see if I can do this here. So, um, I'm not quite sure how to change, not quite sure how to change my window. Um, well, I, I guess it, if you want it, we can, uh, we can kind of go through it, but I had an aerial and on lot 27, which is this westerly abutter, uh, the way that lot is laid out is the, the house is here and the driveway is on the west side of the lot. So I actually, you know, we could, um, somebody could put the driveway here and still maintain uh, the 40 foot separation. So, but we'd be happy to work through staff and put that on the plan and have it approved by the town. Um, the, uh, Sarah and I had talked about the note about NAD 83. So uh, we will make that revision. Uh, we will label the type of um, the type of the sewer, which is an, uh, an eight inch uh, AC pipe. And um, we have a typo on note 13, which is the uh, recordable. It says it's a two sheet plan set and it should say sheet one will be recorded and uh, we have sheet two on there. So we, we've already fixed that. So the next submission will have that. Uh, the written certification is something we typically do should the plan be approved and when we submit the signature, uh, same thing with the digital files in the PDF to the town. So I think that covers the, the, the main points that I wanted to, um, to address. I'd certainly be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay, thank you, Joe. Board members, question for the applicant? Well, uh, Tim, this is Jeremy. I, I, I really have a question for Joanne. Uh, item number seven, remove or relocate the fence and Joe, suggested the applicant does not want to. And my question to us is why do we care? It doesn't affect anything on the lots. Isn't that just a matter of the two abutter, the abutter and this lot owner? What's the municipal interest with that fence? It would be different if there were encroachment, arguably on this lot that affected it. But in this case, it's not. It doesn't have anything to do with the what we're looking at other than there's a fence over there. We're not we're not the policemen for boundary line encroachments that don't really affect us. So Joanne, Jim at, directed that comment towards you. Yeah, that that's fine. I just wanted to point it out. And if the board felt that it would be a problem, they could certainly ask for um, some either that it be moved or not. But I, I don't I haven't heard from any abutters complaining about it. And I'm sure they would would be if if they were not satisfied with it. I, Tim, I, I'd suggest we at least state in the minutes that by Joe showing that fence, we're not um, confirming it or taking any position on it. It's a it's a matter that's just doesn't affect us. And so, what is your what what do you think about Note Seven? Should we leave it or remove it? On her, oh, yeah, no, I, I'd remove it. From st from the staff notes? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I just don't think we need that. Um, uh, even to get into it. Okay, so um, how, what is the procedure for that? Do I have to get a vote from the members? Well, to I think, Tim, when, when we approve, if, if we approve this, I, I like the way Joe is very careful about saying if, if and when we do the well, same thing here, we can just approve it with conditions one through six and leave out okay. seven. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments for the, for the applicant or staff at this time? Um, do we generally handle the waivers before or after the public hearing, Joanne? 
Um, usually after, in case there are any comments on the waivers. Okay, I ju you just have it as number two on your rec staff recommendation for for um, handling the application. So um, at this point, if we don't have any other questions from board members, I'd like to open the public hearing, Joanne. Okay, I'm going to open up the phone lines. Is there anyone on the is there anyone on the phone who would like to comment on the Toby and Renee Gamash application? We'll give it a minute here to give people a time to call in. Anyone out there on the Gamash application? I don't think so. So is it, I have to say it must be safe then to close the public hearing. No one's speaking up. <laughs> All right. So then we will close the public hearing. OK, well, let's address the waivers now. Joanne, could you start with the first waiver or? Um, yeah, we'll do them individually. I think it'd be better. OK. So the first waiver is Section 6M wetlands delineation. And Joe did submit in the packet. The explanation. I'll make a motion, Joanne, to waive the requirements for a wetland delineation. Or grant the waiver, I should say. OK, the motion is made to grant the waiver for wetlands delineation by Collis Adams. Do I have a second? Second from Barbara. Second from Barbara. Thank you. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Tim, we typically, and I suggest you do it here, we, we ask Sarah if she has any opinion on this, and she is the engineer for the town, even though Collis might happen to be an engineer. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Sarah, would you like to weigh in on this? I have no comments on the waivers. On all three or just this one? Oh, really all three. Well, thank you. Problem with them. So that'll save some time. All right, so there's a motion uh, to, to grant the waiver for the wetlands delineation section 6M made by Carlos, seconded by Barbara. We'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. <laughs> I hate the mute on this program. I hate this program. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it in your voice. Uh, Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. Yeah. Chair votes yes. The most uh, waiver has been granted for Section 6M. Jo Joanne, run the second one for us, please. The second one is Appendix C, water, storm water management plan requirement. Have some, any discussion on the waiver request for Appendix C, storm water management plan? I, I move that we approve it based on Sarah's non-comment and the applicant's presentation. Motion been made by Jim. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Second about Paulus. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. The chair votes yes. Number three, get uh, Joanne. And the last one is Appendix D, erosion control standards. And written on the waiver form st uh, states the contractor to use standard best management practices shown on the plan. The proposed house would be relatively small due to size of new lot. Okay, we have we have a request for uh, a waiver for Appendix D, the erosion control standards. I move that we grant it on the same basis as the, the prior ones and the basis of the applicant's presentation. Motion made by Jim to grant the waiver. Do I have a second? 
Second. Seconded by Collis. Discussion on the motion? Bill? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes, I'm, uh, I want to amend my motion so that Gail adds the usual wording about from the regs on the standard we're supposed to do. Yeah. Just take that as yeah, understood. I got Carl it. Carlos, do you second the yes. amended motion? Yeah. Agreed. Thank you. Um, so, Gail, you're the next one on the list. Yes. David? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So the three waivers that were requested have been granted. Um, Joanne, do you have any other comments that you need to uh, uh, present to us before we wrap this up? No, I'm all set. Thank Mr. you. Chair, any I move that we approve of the uh, the plan, uh, the application with conditions, staff recommendations one through six as conditions. So Jim has made a motion. Yeah, Bill, was that you? Okay. Jim's made a motion seconded by Phil to approve the plan with conditions one through six under the staff recommendations. Any discussion on the motion? This is Barbara, yes. Okay, Barbara, please. Um, I just would like point to, to note that to my knowledge, this board has historically not allowed the creation of non-conforming lots. And I understand they got approval from ZBA to do it. And I understand that ZBA is not binding on us, but essentially what they got from ZBA was permission to create a non-conforming lot by getting waivers for frontage and, and area. Um, and I'm gonna vote for the motion, but I, I think we need to recognize that the zoning board made its approval and that's what we're doing. Because normally we have, many times in the past said we're not going to create a, a non-conforming lot um so times they change and these are different circumstances and i get where we're coming from but that's what we're doing thank you and thank you barbara i also concur because i actually sent jo joanne an email that the shed was in the in the setback and it was going to be a discussion item at the meeting tonight and she informed me after that the ZBA had granted that, and I would have preferred that the ZBA not granted grant that a shed to have been in the in the setback. They should have required that the shed be removed, as we would have if we did not have a ZBA variance in our hand. Tim, this may I, may I address Barbara's comments? Sort of please, quick. Tim, please. Uh, um, I'm I share her concern about the ZBA's granting variance. <laughs> But as a result of the variances, this is deemed a conforming lot by variance. We're not creating it. The ZBA allowed it. With that foundation, um, I, you know, all, all of the regulations being met, um, we have trouble denying it. Um, the fire on the ZBA might have, have come to a different conclusion, possibly, but, but we're not. We're the planning board, and we have to take what the ZBA hands us, which is a lot conforming by variance. So if I, if, if I could just respond, and I understand that, and you, you said that much more articulately than I did as to what the ZBA did, but I would just point out, and I'm not sure it's a bad thing, but I, I don't think that we can stick to our guns. If people come in for, and I'm trying to think of a circumstance, but not every created non-conforming lot is going to require a variance. And there are circumstances that I can think of in regards to zone and size and interpretation and a bunch of other things, but I'm just putting it out there. I get the ZBA gave us the lots, um, but it's, it's an interesting question given the circumstances of the time and lots. Uh, let me let me make, make one parting comment. I, I'm not suggesting just because the variant uh, ZBA hands it us a lot with variances, we necessarily have to grant it. We still have to look at our planning with some discretion. Just here, it met all the other standards with the waivers we granted. So I think we'd have a difficulty denying. But I I agree with the uh, I think the message Barbara is trying to send. Thank you all. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop talking now. Does anybody else have comment at this time? 
Okay, seeing none, we'll call for a vote on the motion to approve with conditions one through six. Uh, Phil? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? <coughs> yes. And Tim votes yes. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. You're all set. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. The next item on our agenda for this evening is map four, lot 87-6. This is a conformance hearing for the two lot subdivision and site plan of the townhouses on Woodland Village off of Bog Road. Joanne, could you please give the board a rundown on this application, please? Yes. So um, let me just get my papers together here. So the applicant, um, the property is is getting ready to um, be sold to another uh, a, a developer. And when the project was approved back in 2009, there was a condition that was placed on the plan by the planning board that they had to have a conformance hearing to make sure all of the documents were okay. Um, and so they're back here for that conformance hearing. The documents were included in your packet. Those documents, or mo not all, but most of those documents will then um, head over to the select board for their final approval. And um, they're basically documents that were proposed back in 2009 by Jim Coughlin. And the documents have been updated to change the names and the dates and things like that. They have been reviewed by staff and our town attorney. Um, there were a few sm small items that the town attorney added um, just for the benefit of the town. And um, they are ready to be reviewed by this board. The other reason, and I have one comment on one of those documents before you take a vote on that. The other reason they're here is they are obtaining financing um, with, for low income housing. And as part of that, they would like to uh, turn the project into a condominium. The project is has been approved in two phases and each phase would be a separate um, owner. So phase one would be constructed first with one owner. Phase two would have another owner and they would have two separate ownerships under this condominium. And the buildings themselves, whatever buildings are in phase one would be with the first owner. Whatever buildings were in phase two would be with the second. The units themselves are not being condominiumized. It's just the buildings and the surrounding land around those buildings would be common. And you have a plan in your packet that also um, shows that as uh, highlighted areas with where the common area is and the phases. So they're here for two reasons. And I need to unmute a few people before we. Before you unmute anybody, Joanne, I have a question for you. Sure. So this goes back to the Dakota partners came in and they were working through the New Hampshire Housing Authority last time my memory serves me correctly. Is that still where we are with the present ownership? Yes, they did receive their financing. Um, they have not closed yet on the property, um, but once everything gets finalized in the plans, the documents are approved and the plans are signed, um, the closing would take place. So, so next, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. So my next question is, is Dakota Partners selling this project to another group of owners? No, not to my knowledge. Dakota Partners is taking this over and then the other portion of it, phase two, would be Dakota would still be involved, but I believe it would be under another 
name for the ownership, but you'll have to ask their attorney that specific question. Okay, um, now in terms of the overall project, which is a network of roads, the sewer lines, the water lines, if you're going to have two different owners, what is what is your? Well, those owners will be part of one condominium and, and some of these documents that you've received pertain to that condominium. The declaration has been included in the packet for that for that condominium as well as the bylaws. So even though there's numerous owners involved, it's one condominium project. And they all share expenses among themselves or is is one going to is one going to fight with the other one over fixing the roads or fixing the sewer system? All of those areas are common to the condominium, so they would be shared. The buildings themselves are owned by, you know, one owner. The other buildings are owned by the other owner. Okay, thank you. Does any other board members have questions for Joanne? Okay. So Joanne, um, so is is your recommending that th this application is complete and ready to review? Yes. I need a motion, please. I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion. Motion been made by Jim to find it's complete and ready for review. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara. So Jim and Barbara. Um, I, I do have a question though, Tom, I mean, Tim, I couldn't unmute in time. And as I mentioned last time we discussed this procedurally, uh, division of land into condominium ownership is a subdivision under the statute in our reg. So are we granting subdivision approval to do that? Or are we amending a previously granted subdivision to allow the creation of the subdivision? What procedurally are we doing? Because that is, that is a subdivision. I don't, I don't object to the uh, merits, I just particularly, how do we do that? Well, I can't answer that. I'll have to refer to staff and other learned minds. The, it was advertised as a two lot subdivision, which it, it still, it was from the start and it still is. And the site plan of 74 townhouse units, totaling 13 buildings, constructed in two phases, creating a condominium form of ownership of the two phases. So, Joanne, Jim's question is, is this a subdivision application? It's both a subdivision and a site plan application. I think as long as it was noticed as a conversion or subdivision, I mean, a condominium form of ownership, we've, we've covered the field, but I, I think we, in our approval, need to approve the, that we haven't previously, the condominium form of ownership because, again, that is a subdivision. Sort of sitting on top of another subdivision. Here. I just want to. I, I think we can go forward if we're noticed. It was noticed, as you said. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion we haven't voted on yet to find a complete and ready review of a roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Barbara. Yes. Collis. Yes. Jim. Yes. Gail. Yes. Dave. Yes. Yeah. And chair votes yes, Tim votes yes, thank you. So it's complete and ready to review. Um, so, so Joanne, so, I'm going to have to have you lead the discussion on reviewing and discussing a conformance review. Okay, can I introduce the the people who are here tonight to present this? Yes. Or to um, ask any questions, basically? Yes, as um, long as I get it. To make sure they give their names and all the pertinent information if they're alone in the room or however it goes. Or is that okay. only, are they on the phone or on, on a Zoom meeting? Uh, some are on the phone, some are on Zoom. All right, well, just as long as we follow the, the right to level procedures for the Zoom meeting. Okay, so we have Susan, attorney Susan Manchester. Susan, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And next we have Eric Mitchell, who is the engineer. Eric, can you hear us? 
Yes, I can hear you. OK, and we have Jeremy Vieira, who is part of Dakota Partners. Jeremy, are you out there? I am. Can you folks hear me? Yes. Excellent. We have Mark Pil I don't know how to pronounce this. But Pilati, <laughs> is that right? That's very close, Mark Pilat. I am here. Pilat. Thank you. <laughs> and welcome. we have Michael Tierney, who is representing uh, Jim Coughlin. And we have two people on the phone, but I'm not sure if they're here for that project or not. I think one of the phone is you. It's eight nine nine. Oh yeah, and the other one, I'm not sure who that is. Is anyone else here representing the applicant for this project? Uh, yeah, this is Eric Kazarski with Dakota Partners. Okay. Five seven number. Yes. Okay. So could I have him, Joanne? Could I have him spell his last name, please? Eric, can you spell your last name? K U C Z A R. S-K-I. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so the for the conformance hearing, we have uh, several documents in your packet, which I've listed in my staff report. These documents, as I said before, these documents originally came in fairly similar to what we have now. Um, when Jim Coughlin was handling the project. Since that time, we have received revised documents from Attorney Manchester, um, basically using the same language, but updating the dates, the names, uh, a few other minor changes. These documents were reviewed and, and they were also sent to our town attorney for review. Um, we've been working back and forth with the attorney and the attorneys for this project, and the documents are now in final format. There is one question that I have on one of these documents that I would just like to get clarification for. Um, there is a document entitled Declaration of Covenants and Restrictions for Residential Use on lot 87-6-1. This is the parcel that will remain vacant for now. This parcel is not going to be, from what I understand, and Sue, please correct me if I'm wrong, this parcel is not going to be owned by Dakota. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. okay. So, just barely actually. Uh, is this any better? A little no. bit. So, Joanne, before we get going uh, here, I'm going to rely on... Joanne? Yes? Before we get going here, I'm going to rely on you, since you know all the names of, of who's going to address what, that you um, identify the person who's going to speak, they're going to speak to the subject matter that they want to speak to, and then we will have we'll offer questions from board members as we do this one at a time, rather than listen to a bunch of people and then have to backtrack for questions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, this question is really for the board. Within that document, this document covers 87-6-1 which is the undeveloped lot. It's not the lot including the uh, multifamily buildings. And this document, along with all of the documents going back to when this was first approved, it states the use of the property shall at all times be restricted to residential use with, with no more than two dwelling units to be constructed within a residential structure, subject to existing easements and covenants of records, et cetera. The, the conditions of approval stated, covenant and restrictions for development, limitation of single family or duplex 
for lot 87-6-1. So to me, that means one single family or one duplex structure. But the way this reads, to me, it doesn't say that. It, it, I'll read it again. The use of the property shall at all times be restricted to residential use with no more than two dwelling units to be constructed within a residential structure. Well, it, seems, that, it seems obvious that if the document doesn't agree with the condition of approval, then the document needs to be changed. Well, uh, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but to me, this sounds like you can have as long as you don't have more than two dwelling units in a residential structure the number of residential structures are not limited it does sound like that yes uh board members this is barbara joanne can you tell me on the list what document number you're looking at yep so it's It is number. It's about seven. a third of the. It's about a third of the way into the packet. If that's what you're asking, Joe, uh, Barbara, where it is in our packet? No, give me the title. I know where the documents are. I what you it's called number seven. What, seven. Okay, and it's on the second page. It's only a, it's only a two. So one, it's a two-page document, double-sided. So it's only one page, piece of paper. And it's on the back side as number one. Okay. Because I was looking at the overall declarations of Woodland Village condominium. And that's for the site plan, but this is for the other lot that was supposed to only have one house on it, either and it's, single and it's or duplex. That in this documentation. I'm just not seeing it on the, I, I, I couldn't. Okay, so, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay. I got it, okay. I'm not sure what Joanne, as Jim, what, what Joanne's concern is. Um, we can have it in our condition, our approval that we're not, yeah, we're not approving any any use of the any of these lots that doesn't comply with zoning or subdivision regulations. So we're not inadvertently being deemed to approve something, but it appears to be a, a, a permitted use. So for some reason, when the board first approved this, they made an agreement with Mr. Coughlin that that second lot would not be developed except for possibility of a single family or a duplex on the entire lot of 30, 30 something acres. And, and I don't know why, but. That's what it says in paragraph one of this document clearly says something different. I think your interpretation that it means something different is correct. Okay. So I just need, need to some direction from the board because if that, if that is changing, then we need to advise the owner. Now, attorney Tierney is representing Mr. Coughlin. If you want to have him speak. I, I, Joanne, before we have more people getting into this that are, I think the board needs to make a decision on, are we going to stick to the original conditions of approval, which you have read to us, which does not agree with this paragraph one paragraph stated number one and I think the language in that has to reflect the exact wording in the in our condition of approval simple and if they agree to modify that paragraph then it's then we can move on so if you want to ask the applicant's attorney Mr. Coughlin's attorney for uh, the opinion on that feel free Joanne but I'm just saying that if it doesn't match the the condition of approval, then it's not acceptable. Mr. Turney, do you have anything to respond to? Uh, yes, thank you. So I had read um, that document to agree with the condition um, to the extent the board thinks 
um, that some clarifying language is necessary to make clear that it agrees with the condition. We're absolutely fine with that. Um, as I'm reading the condition, it says to be constructed within a residential structure. I understood that to be a single solitary residential structure, uh, but if the board would like to direct a, a clarifying word or, or two, it's such as a single solitary residential structure, um, we're fine with whatever um, you know wording the board deems appropriate. Thank you, Attorney Tierney. So Joanne, are you clear with what we need to have that amended to that paragraph amended? Yes, to that sounds fine. I, okay. I just wanted to make sure it was clear with everyone. All right, so, so um, I'm going to let you keep going, Joanne, at your pace. Okay. So as I stated previously, these are the documents that we have. It's, it has been reviewed by staff and legal counsel. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions, but there are several people who could certainly answer anything that you may have. Um, Attorney Manchester has been uh, pretty much heading up this uh, amendment of these documents and working with the attorney from the town. So I think I think everything else is ready to go over to the select board for approval. Kim, I have I have a question on Jim. question two documents. Uh, this Jim. The first is on the walking trail easement deed. If you go to the second page of that, the last paragraph, it has the phrase, the grantee shall hold harmless grantor from any liabilities arising from this, the grantee being the town. We've had this discussion on prior applications. Uh, the town does not have an insurance coverage on an indemnity obligation under Primex. And I've objected to any of these provisions in these documents. This is a uh, project for the benefit of these, this applicant. I don't think the town could incur any risk. And I, I'm not going to uh, vote to approve it without wording. I'd suggest it be taken out. Jim, so, could you tell me yeah, where this is? It's the last paragraph, yeah. page two. Let me just finish. And it says, and the grantee shall hold harmless grantor from any liabilities, claims, or damages arising out of grantor's use of the easement. So Joanne, 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 who's going to respond to this from the team out there? Attorney Manchester. Attorney Manchester, please. Can you hear me? You're very soft spoken. If you can make it louder, it would be good, Attorney Manchester. Okay. Yes, we will delete that language. That's satisfactory to you, Jim? It is. Okay, so it is satisfactory I, I to the board. This has come up in other documents, so we should alert the town council to be attentive to it. But I appreciate uh, Attorney Manchester's offer. Anything so, else, Jim? You said was it two second, My before, second. Before you move on, I just want to be clear here. So you'd like to remove starting with and the grantee shall hold harmless. Yes, I. And I ending I, with use of the easement. That I think that's Susan's offer, and that's what I look for. Okay. Okay. That's correct. I understand. I understand. Okay. This the second is it, it's on the development agreement, uh, which was a bigger discussion. Uh, other towns do these as a matter of course. We typically have not, in part because our condition of approval states the terms, and on a development agreement is usually an obligation that goes in both directions and imposes some burdens on the town. And we've been resistant to uh, assuming those burdens. In this case, they're mainly um, inspection deadlines, response deadlines to their changes. And you know, 10 days comes up frequently. Uh, I'd like some assurance that um, those are practical because I don't, knowing the demands on our town staff, um, I don't think it's appropriate to put them in a box because of a development agreement for the benefit of an applicant, particularly where it's not something we typically do. So maybe it's a matter of tweaking those to make them work. I guess I'd like Sarah to be, have some comment on it. Sarah, uh, you've been requested to speak. Do you have any comment? 
I'm sorry. Um, do you want Jim to, to, to ask you his question? Let, let, yes, I, please. I'll do that. I'll do it in a summary form. The, um, the, the development agreement, again, I'll repeat myself, which is not something we typically do, uh, imposes obligations on the town, particularly as to inspection and inspection deadlines. There's going to be some consequence if we don't meet those. And they're relatively tight. I understand the applicants wanting to get a quick response from the town, but the town often has other things to do. And I'm concerned about approving it with those rel relatively tight deadlines and possibly other obligations that we have. And I just, I, I guess, a question for you, Joanne, is was that review for those? And then, second, is there an agreement? Um, I am. I'm see, I'm not seeing in DPW's files that we have a copy of them. This is Sue Manchester again. Go ahead. Man, I'm turn happy it. to work. With Can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. I am happy to work with the town. Um, if some of the deadlines look too strict, um, I have every confidence the town will act appropriately. So I am not wed to any particular time periods contained in the development agreement and would be happy to modify those as required. Well, this is Barbara. I have a question. At and I saw this in here, and there's a there's a 10 day and a 14 day. If, as Jim points out, we don't normally do this. Was this part of the conditions of approval for the original program for the original project? Why do we have one if we don't usually do it? The um, I, I this is to Manchester. I will have to defer to Michael, but I don't know. I was not here in 2009. These were drafted in 2009. I took them. I tried to update and modify them. Um, if they're not required, then, you know, this, I think it's within the board's power tonight to say we don't want a development agreement. But these particular lists of agreements were, I think, in the original approval. All right. Thanks for that clarification. Hmm. Has this is this document the same document that was sent out in November? Yeah, probably. Has it been updated since then? Um, there may have been a few little minor things, but not nothing to do with that. Okay. I I apologize. I don't think I even reviewed this because we we have not done this for any project I've worked on before. So I'm looking at it now and I don't even understand what the offsite problems section is saying. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure what the, what DPW would be, what would be fixing. And definitely 10, 10 days to fix something is definitely we, we don't always have control of that. What if it was in the winter and there's a snowstorm? All, all our guys are straight, straight out. Again, um, as far as Dakota is concerned, we don't need this agreement. So, uh, Joanne, should we ask Attorney Tierney to speak as the applicant's attorney? Yes. I should say as Mr. Mr. Coughlin, attorney. Yes. Attorney Tierney. Sure. So I don't have any uh, particular reason why there is anything in uh, the development agreement other than the 2009 conditions. Um, condition, I think, 4I it was uh, required that there be a development agreement to the town attorney's satisfaction satisfaction and and at the time in 2009 when this was originally drafted uh that was something that the town attorney um thought that the board um would want um if the board doesn't want it we'll take it out 
um, but but this is just um, what we were told um, many years ago was what the board would want. This 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 is Jim. I'm going to suggest that we when we get to our conditions of approval that we consider deleting this um, for all the reasons said. I will also I don't like provisions that say to the satisfaction of the town attorney. Um, it's the board that makes the decisions and I say that as attorney to several towns that should not be something that attorney agrees to it's something that we agree to. So uh, attorney Cheney uh, noted one of the provisions I particularly don't like, but that's not the applicant's fault. That was in something they inherited. So I'm going to suggest that the approval is without the development agreement unless in our discussions we find a need for it. OK, thank you. Any other discussion on this document from other board members? Right, Joanne, do you have yes. any? Opinion? Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm late on this mute and I'll tell you my screen has transformed itself during the course of this meeting. So I apologize for having the video off, but it's I don't know what's going on with it. Um, I see a couple of people on the screen, but most of the people I'm not seeing in my screen is blank from speakers. I, you know, I appreciate Jim saying, why do we have it? But if this was a requirement of the original plan, um, which we don't have the conditions. I, I, and I, this, I have them, Barbara. I, I, but I'm assuming that they're not producing a document that took time to draft if it wasn't a requirement. I mean, I don't, I don't know. It wasn't reviewed. There might be something in here to be a benefit to the town. This is a pretty big project for the town. This is one of the bigger development projects that we've approved in this community, and it's going to have a big impact on what's going on off of Bog Road and um, the construction in the area. So just so when we get to the end, I'm not so inclined to delete it. It may have stuff in there that DPW might like um, that it, it doesn't feel it has under our regular regs. I think the time frames that are in it are unrealistic, but, uh, you know, I'm I'm not, if we're going to have this as part of the final approval, my inclination is to be subject to the subdivision development agreement being worked out to the satisfaction of DPW and a, rep and a report by our next meeting that indeed it was or was not. I mean, that's sort of where I'm coming down because, yeah, I don't know what offsite improvements means, but I can picture that there's going to be some offsite impacts on this site. And there, that's why there was some fees associated with this project when it was first approved. And thank you very much. I have a few other comments on it from looking at it. Um, if now would be an okay time to talk about them. I think ahead, that the, the 10 working days for condition number nine, the complete completion of improvements, I think 10 days for that is fine because I can't think of a situation where I've made someone wait 10 days from when they finished a project to going out and looking at it. So I think that 10 days is okay. Um, I have concerns about section 10 where it talks about um, if the applicant fails to do maintenance, DPW can do them and deduct the expense from the performance or maintenance surety. However, I am not aware that we hold sureties and maintenance securities forever. Um, I'm not aware of that amount being talked about for road maintenance. Unless um, this is all grouped into the, I believe we're holding around twelve thousand dollars for a drain, a drainage maintenance. Mm -hmm. However, my understanding is that is focused on the underground system that is pretty extensive. Um, so I guess maybe this wording should be changed just so that like we can use that funding also. If we, the reality is we, I, I'm not sure when we would go do maintenance on a private road. Uh, 
this came up in the project across from the villa where you didn't want to go down and do any kind of repairs to the drainage swales and i think we concurred with your opinions on that project as well yeah I, I'm going to suggest this, Jim. I'm going to suggest, in light of Barbara's comments, that um, we can keep this and have it it's subject to satisfaction of DPW and planning director. Um, I, I, I would I would assume that if it were reviewed in some detail quickly and identify any concern. But uh, yeah, I don't think we need to go through it. And, detail now since the applicant seems willing to, to work with this on necessary modifications that will change the substance of it. And Jim, I concur with Sarah's opinion. I don't think that we should enter into any type of agreement here with any type of funds that are put in escrow for the town to be doing any maintenance of any type or any repairs within this private development. I don't think we should enter into any agreement. I don't read this as compelling us to. It just gives us a remedy if we choose to. We've had this discussion, but uh, yeah. this agreement, as I read it, does not require us to do it. And that it's the requirement making our obligation I object to. But typically, we do want to keep some hook, if necessary, to protect the butters if something went wrong. So I don't object to it. It's just not a requirement that we do it. I think it's correctly worded. But I, again, I, I don't think we need to walk through this because obviously people haven't focused on it yet. I you know step by step, as long as they have an agreement that it will be put into agreement. So what's your, what is point. your suggestion that it be reviewed I, by DPW and staff? Yeah, and I think it's as Barbara said, we, yeah, by the next meeting, we can have confirmation that it's, it's acceptable. Um, is that agreeable to to? Joanne, as well as Sarah, because you two attuned seem to be the ones that are going to be doing the work on this. That's fine by, by me. Sarah? That's fine by me, too. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other documents that want that need to be discussed by uh, starting with Joanne? you have any other documents in here that have issues? No, that was it. Board members? Um, Joanne, can we open it up to for any of the um, applicants or the representatives that have anything to add at this point, please? You can handle their introductions if they want to speak. Is everyone all set? Joanne, this is uh, Mark. Mark. Yeah, this is Mark Pallotta, Dakota Partners. Um, I think everything that's been asked of is fair and is reasonable. We can get all that taken care of, as Susan Manchester has pointed out. Um, only concern I have, I guess, is really timing. Obviously, we were looking to close on the property fairly quickly over the, hopefully this month into June at the latest and get going with construction as soon as possible. Um, just so that we, we're looking ahead. I don't want to get stuck into the winter and trying to get foundations in and have a huge amount of extra costs. So it's really trying to push so that we can get out of the uh, the winter conditions this coming year. So we'd like to keep the process moving as fast as possible um, and work closely with DPW and getting this agreement in place. Okay, Mark, we, we have this, we have this uh, statement for most applicants about time about time being uh, important it's also the fact that this is the first that's come up for us tonight and it, it's going to have to be reviewed and brought up at the next meeting so you're going to have to probably wait at least another Hello. meeting tim this is jim I'm, I'm assuming though when i made my suggestion that we could we could address this at the hello. next meeting. hello hello Hang on, whoever you are, just hold on until you're recognized, please. Jim? This is Sue yes. I don't hear anybody else. Did is we lose our hello? phone? Hello? Hi, Joanne. Hello, this is Catherine Prescaza and Abutter. I can't hear anybody else either. Thank you, Catherine. Joanne, did we lose our phone line? Can you hear me, Sue? I don't know what, I don't know what happened. Yeah. I don't see anybody's mouth moving. Oh, I see Joanne's mouth moving. She just it's, left her desk on the video feed. No one's speaking. That the phone is active. Hello. Let me try this again. 
Hello. Hello, this is Catherine Pescaza. Can, can you hear me hear now, Catherine? Hi, hello. This is Catherine Prescaza. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Can you hear us? I can hear Joanne. Well, Joanne well, I'm, explain what's going on, Joanne, and let her know that we can hear her. I think I think they could hear you now too as well. Can you can you hear Tim? This is Dave Pierce. I can Tim? hear Catherine. Okay. All right. We're we're good. Okay. I can hear too. All right. Okay. Me, thank you. Mr. Chairman, let me finish what I was saying. I, I'm assuming we can finish this quickly so it comes up next meeting because we're going to look at it when we have to. And if you put it out in a month, we won't look at it for a month. So I think we say we'll do it the next two weeks. We can do it. I, I concur, Jim. Yes. Same here. So, Mr. Pallott, is that that's probably the, the timeline you're looking at? Y yes, it, it that's. I, I appreciate that. I was, I was afraid it's going to be out in another month, but if it's in a couple of weeks, we will do everything we have to to make sure it's taken care of. Thank you. I, Thank you. I believe the date is May 27th. So that'll require Joanne and that requires Joanne and Sarah to get this updated, and um, you're going to have to distribute it to the members updated, Joanne. Yes. So that means you got about a week, right, to get it ready or less. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this Sarah. is Sarah, and and I will I will schedule an appointment with Adam so that we can both go over it um, next week. The one thing I'm requesting the the document that I have is dated 2009, um, October 15th, and I haven't been sent this document since um, November of last year. Have any updates been made since October? since November of last year and the 2009 date. If so, can a new version be circulated to us so that we're reviewing the newest version? Absolutely. Okay. Tim, this is Barbara. So just for clarification, I don't understand that anybody has any issues with what is being done here the concept, there's going to be a change made on the Declaration of Covenants for the residential use of 8761 paragraph one to comply with, to be consistent in wording with the terms of the approval. Um, I think there was one other change that we talked about. I don't need to see those documents again because I'm assuming those changes can be made and just given to you for administrative review. So the only thing as a board member that I might be expecting to see again is this subdivision subdivision development agreement with whatever changes gets worked out. I, for me, there's no reason to regenerate all these documents. I mean, that's just me. I don't know the rest of the board. I concur, Barbara. I think it should be handled administratively and report to us. So, Joanne, if you meet with Sarah and Adam next week, that's going to meet your timeline? Yes. Okay, good. Sure, All right. I just get a copy of it, though. Any revision? Did you hear right. that, Joanne? Jim is requesting a copy. For your packet for the May 27th meeting, correct? I'd like to see it in advance. I have a chance to read it and digest it and think about it. Okay. Okay. If anybody else wants a copy of it, just contact Joanne at the office and she will make sure you get a copy of it. All right, Joanne, what's next on this conformance hearing? So the conformance hearing ha just has to do with these documents. Um, everything else is all set on as we move along with this. The This was the next next thing that they needed to have approval for. And, and like I said, once these documents are finalized, they'll go in one package to the select board for um, final approval and acceptance. Okay, so we had, I wrote six names down as people who are part of this project. Uh, do any of the other members, Eric, Jeremy, Mark, Michael, or 
or another Eric have anything they want to say before we move on to the public hearing? All set. Okay. Thank you, all. So, Thank Joanne, you. At, this, at this time, Joanne will open the public hearing. Yes, we have uh, one person that I'm aware of that would like to speak. That would be Kathy Prescaza. Uh, Kathy, if you're there, could you Hello. identify yourself? And um... <clears throat> yes, good good evening. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, this is Kathy Prescaza. Um, I'm in a butter, direct a butter to the property. And um, I submitted a letter to the board this afternoon. Um, we just had a chance to review the document that came in, the packet that came in that was over 100 pages. And there was a lot to digest. Um, I drafted a letter to the board late this afternoon that um, I hope has come into your possession. Um, I'd like to read it into the record, please. Before you, before you go any um, farther, Kathy, I did not get it. Did any other members get Kathy's correspondence? No. So Kathy, none it, of it us may have come in too late for you to get it. So, so um, if you can, we're meeting in two weeks. So if you can look at it and consider it um, in the next two weeks, that would be um, pertinent to do. Uh, uh, but it, I still would like to read it into the record, if I may. I'm looking at my email, and it was received at 7:02. Mr. Chair, I, so it, I, Mr. Chair, I'm going to object to having somebody read a long document into the record. We don't usually allow that because of time. If Kathy wants to summarize it, that's fine. But I, I, we don't know the length of this, and I, yeah, I'd like to know what we're getting into before we permit her to do that. Kathy, so would you, Kathy, would you please be able to summarize your letter rather than read the whole thing? Sure, you'll have a copy of it in your. Uh, presumably tomorrow, um, Joanne can distribute it to you. Um, but in summary, um, I am concerned about the completion, um, the completeness hearing um, in this packet for tonight's hearing. Um, as you know, this development was first granted special exception um, in 2009, and it was a condominium structure in which each of the 76, then 76 proposed dwelling units were to be individually owned um, as a 176th share of the condominium structure. Um, in those documents, there are in the condominium structure, in the condominium documents, it talks about ownership and shares of each of them, and the condominium association was responsible for uh, maintenance and upkeep, that sort of thing. Um, it required a quorum of uh, a certain reasonable number of the owners to participate and to authorize spending and maintenance issues and so on and so forth. Um, the original approval was given with the understanding that the dwelling units, individual townhouse dwelling units, were to be good for Gosstown because it was uh, a first-time home buyer's opportunity uh, where in which they would have an entry point into financial security of home ownership and to establishing meaningful roots in our community. Um, this development, um, 12 years later, after that original um, proposal and approval, has had a variety of project investors, partners, funding entities, as, um, as well as changes that we've seen on the town level from town planners and officials and board members and DPW staff that have just been natural changes over time. And the changes have been hard to keep up with. Um, this project presented tonight in the completeness hearing has significant changes that differ from the original terms and understanding. Um, even as recently as the last public hearing, they presented this as a rental property, 100% rental property developed by Dakota Properties um, and owned exclusively by Dakota Properties. Now the applicant's packet shows uh, an ownership arrangement that has, uh, it's a little bit different than how Joanne seemed to explain it. Um, in the condominium documents on the very last page, 
it talks about each individual building is owned by an individual owner. So they've changed the verbiage of the definition of a unit. Instead of being a dwelling unit, they've changed it to be building units. So there are 13 owners, and um, they are... They are individually owned, and as you go into the dive into the documents of maintenance, it talks about each building owner is individual and is responsible for maintenance, upkeep, siding of each individual building unit. Um, I think this is rife with opportunity for conflict and um, problems related to upkeeping of the roads and this especially the drainage structure and underground storage um, and drainage um, system that is, that is complex on the edge of the wetland. Um, so there are fundamental changes in the character of this project and its relationship to the neighborhood. Um, I also included in this document um, a document that I had um, acquired through the New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority. It's a project summary that documents that the current project is actually a low-income and ultra-low-income rental project funded by New Hampshire Housing Finance Authority, the low-income tax credit, HUD, and others. It says that the current Phase 1 arrangement requires and this is important. It requires at least 75% of the dwelling units will be restricted with four units, will be income restricted with four units set aside for severely mentally ill residents and additional six, resident, six units for recipients of the home program. For perspective, in the funding structure currently proposed for phase one, only 11 of the dwelling units are to be rented at market rate. The remaining dwelling units will be reserved for low income and or subsidized rental housing. The lowest bracket, the funding structure requires these new tenants to have income limits less than or equal to 30% of AMI. That means um, average median income for Gothstown. In plain language, um, that means that this neighborhood will have subsidized tenants living there whose eligibility to move in into this newly created neighborhood in Goffstown is limited by the, by the project funding structure. In accordance with the funding, most tenants' income level must be 70%, 50%, and 40% less than the average income of current Goffstown residents. This is a very different type of project that may well require additional services and community infrastructure that were not addressed at the application for special exception. I believe that this project will undoubtedly cause a reduction in my property's value and will change the character of a single family neighborhood we live in. I also have larger concerns for the community of Goffstown. The applicant has not shared these facts in the abutter notice for public hearings for time extensions, and so many others may also share these concerns but are simply unaware of the changes that have been incorporated into this project. Um, I'm concerned um, that the conservation easements and easement delineation maps ref uh, don't reflect the new ownership and have not been uh, the maps of which have not been included in the completeness hearing. Um, again, it goes back to the subsurface drainage structures and who will be responsible with them, for them. With these new investor owners and other interested parties, it is not clear to me who exactly will be responsible for these critical easements, structures, and protection of the wetlands. Um, and I wonder, has the Conservation Commission been consulted on these latest project iterations. Um, with this development, with the um, number of units that are required to be house, housing mentally ill um, residents as classified by um, section, I think it's called 811. Um, 
uh, let's see what it is. It's called, uh, bear with me for a minute. It's called Section 811 PRA Program. These are set asides for individuals with severe mental illness. The conservation, the original conservation allowed hunting and fishing on this, on this conservation easement. I wonder, irregardless of one's position on gun control, I wonder the wisdom that would be in a conservation easement that allows mentally ill residents to have guns in a high-density uh, housing development um, adjacent to single-family neighborhoods. It just seems like a very poorly um, thought-out um, arrangement, and I, I am not in favor of that. Um, so I am looking for documentation that specifically addresses and reinforces the development on the restriction on map lot 4, lot 87, 6-1, with the proposed subdivided property located at the end of Evergreen Drive, which restricts the development to uh, single-family residence or single duplex as previously presented by the applicant and approved by the board. In addition to that, the original documents that were submitted um, on page, let me, let me see, I wrote it down as we were talking, on uh, the documents prepared by Eric Mitchell's office, sheet R3, dated June 15th, 2009, shows the buildable area, a single family dwelling or duplex resident footprint, building footprint, as well as a single well radius for that limitation for that particular lot. That was very clear and part of the uh, original approval understanding for that uh, building restriction on that particular lot. Um, and furthermore, I have not seen any documentation on the applicant's submission that addresses disclosures prescribed by the Town of Gothstown Zoning Ordinance. Section 3-6-2 uh, requires that affordable housing documents um, provide information to the planning board um, that would include but are not limited to square foot size of dwelling units, number of bedrooms, property cost, site development cost, uh, cost of off-site improvements, unit construction per square foot cost, architectural and engineering cost, legal cost, construction financing cost, developer's profit, and cost of conditions and restrictions. That's significant. That has not happened yet either. Now, um, the, another topic is the wetland setback. It is shown on the drawings <clears throat> as a 100-foot setback on the site plan drawings. Yet the buildable area calculation on the drawings uses a 50-foot wetland setback. If the 100-foot setback is required and applied in the calculation, the number of dwelling units calculation yields a lower number of dwelling units on the build dwelling units and subsequent buildings than the number shown on this application's drawings and proposal. So. Admittedly, there's a lot to digest in the changes that were presented by this applicant in these new documents submitted in the form of a completeness hearing application. I respectfully request that the board find this application is not, not complete, not ready to be approved, and the project may not move forward at this time until the issues have had time to be fully reviewed, digested, and resolved by interested parties, including the abutters. Thank you. Thank you, Kath. So, Joanne, I would ask that when you receive Kathy's um, letter, that you look through it and the questions she raised. Uh, you make look at the questions she has raised, please. I will. Thank you. Um, I thank have you. a. Thank you, Kathy. Also, I will include a document that has information from New Hampshire Housing. It talks about um, in 2020. Anybody else was, uh, for the public was, hearing um, that wants to speak on the 
Hello. Yes, I'd like to speak. Hello. Yeah, you're on. Hello. May I speak? Joanne. Joanne. Yes. Can you figure it out for us, please? Try. She she can speak. She just she keeps stopping. Okay. No, I I thought that you couldn't hear me. I'm sorry. Um, also, I will attach um, a document from um, that talks about um, New Hampshire Housing Low Income Tax Credit Reservations. There's a company called Reese Larkin Development Incorporated LLC from Newburyport, Massachusetts that has a credit in the amount of $800,000 for development of low income housing on this property. That's a, a name that, um, that Jim Coughlin has not, to my understanding, talked about, um, and it appears to be different than the Dakota properties. I'm, I'm not sure who they are or what this ownership arrangement is, but with 13 different buildings and thir the opportunity for 13 different owners, it um, is concerning to me for the maintenance and um, um, just all around um, sense of roads, drainage, protection of wetlands, and all of the concerns that have been prime um, and forefront in this application all the way along. I think that's At it for point, now. Thank you. Joanne, can you hear me? Yes. Joanne, I, I was, my computer went off. I was out of the meeting the entire time Kathy was speaking, so um, I'm good. I'll just have to rejoin you now. Okay. Uh, so where are we with uh, the public hearing. Any other people who want to speak at the public hearing? Uh, there doesn't appear to be anyone on the outside phone. I don't know if anyone from the applicant or owner would like to say anything further. Well, we asked them before and they nobody spoke up. So I'm going to. Um, we can we can hear from them after we close the public hearing. OK. Um, we're not going to rebut any of the statements made by Kathy. We're just going to put them into the record as we normally would. So at this time, we were going to close the public hearing. Jim, Jim, this is Jim I have a, a nitty little point um, that either Attorney Kearney or Attorney Manchester would, would note that conservation easement requires the notarized approval of the select board so that should be added under RSA 47747. Attorney Manchester, did you hear that? I, I heard 477 something and I heard selectmen, but I couldn't hear the rest. Uh, on the conservation easement, you have to add the approval. Oh, 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 I don't have a notary. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Again, I inherited these documents. That's all right. Well, We'll get them. Tell Susan she's been this case. twice, but not three times. So she's used her quarter. Okay. Um, Joanne, I have a question for you. Yes. So um, there's an offsite improvement amount of $181,680.24 that's due to be paid. Um, it, when it was a single development, it was it was specified when that amount was due. What is happening with that amount now if you're going to have phases or something to that effect? How is that going to be handled? So that amount, let me just get my paperwork here. That amount originally was 150000 and it has been increased over time. Um, the... My question is, how is it going to be paid since this is a phased development? How is that going to be worked out? So and when is and needs to be stated, when is it due? I I need to uh, look back on the most recent approval to see how it was worded, but I believe it is due before the building permit. Sarah, do you remember? Was it before the building permit or before the CO? It's one no. of the two. I can't. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I thought from prior discussions that it was 
prior to the issuance of a building permit, but I could be wrong. I think you might be right. I'm just not 100%. The, the, the money was supposed to be going towards the improvements to Pleasant Street and um, Route 13 and, and Mass Road. Um, however, that work has been done. So the money will go into the general fund. And the other um, amount, the 12,000 something, that money will, will go towards the drainage. Yeah, escrow account. Yeah. So I have Mark Palat has been requesting to speak. Mark, could you speak, please? Yeah, yes, uh, Chairman. That amount, uh, 100, whatever, 180,000, whatever the number was, that will be paid uh, in, within the first phase. So the total amount will be part of the first phase. Uh, my understanding, it was to be paid prior to the CEO. Um, but we can check into that if it is prior to construction, but I believe it was prior to CEO. All right, Joanne, I'm going to rely on you to go back through the the notes yep. and find out when that was and relate that to the applicants, please. Yep. We will go over everything before the plans are signed to make sure the the um, sequence of what has to be done when before we actually have you sign the plans. And Joanne, there's another um, on the on the amount due for the impact fees. There's a question mark in or are these numbers current? Was that reviewed? Are they current? Yes, I provided attorney Manchester with an email about that, that those are the current numbers. OK, thank you. Ch Chairman, just that uh, note, you might look at page eight of the development agreement when Joanne reviews it. I think that's what I'm looking at, Jim. That's where I'm getting the numbers from. Yeah. Now, it's not actually part of the uh, this agreement here, but there are sewer fees and other fees involved with the sewer department, which they are going to have to recognize are are part of their obligations. And it's not in this in this agreement, but I don't think they I think they would have to be aware of that. That's all. That is correct. OK, thank you. Was that you, was that you Mark? Yes, it was. Yes, okay, it was. Thank, thank you. All right, Joanne, do we have any other um, issues here? Board members, do we have any issues with these documents that need to be discussed? Please speak up if you want to speak up. Uh, uh, Tim, this is Jim. Um, I guess procedurally what I, I was going to ask uh, Attorney Manchester to read the uh, condo declaration verbatim, but we'll skip that. Um, what are we asking for tonight? Is Are we going to approve subject to the Again, next time the uh, conditions uh, that we've discussed so that when we come back next next time it's on a limited agenda so we don't have to reopen all this i think that would, when we will recontinue the public hearing at that time yes i think that's what the request is is that admin the administration um, administration take care of getting these things changed finding out about the due date for the improvements um fixing the uh sections of the sections 10 and 9 in the subdivision development agreement if we're going to keep it and if anybody has any other questions about it please relate them to joanne so they can have things ready for the next meeting if if it's possible and once again we don't all need to have that in the packet joanne anybody who wants it copied of it should let you know and they can you can relay copies to them directly. OK, well, so, we will only provide you the documents that um, reflect the changes. Yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. Not do the whole docket, just the paragraphs that the changes are going to be in would be great. OK. So are we continuing this to the next hearing then on that basis to, to review the, the change documents? I believe that would be the proper course of action, Jim. OK. I, I, I'm going to make that motion then. Do we, I get to, I wish to ask Joanne, is there, do we have time on the next agenda? I didn't look. Um, so we have the laundromat coming back in and Montalona subdivision. And David Neiman is making a presentation about some open, um, about some conservation easement. OK, but well I'm going to assume what we're dealing with tonight are 
should be pretty quick because uh, you will have been in a, agreed on the documents and worked with Mark and his team to get them in shape. So we can put this first because it is old business. Okay, then I'm I'm going to move that we um, continue it for the purposes that the chair just outlined to the next meeting as old business. We have a motion to continue this to a date certain, which would be May 27th. Uh, May 27th. Motion by Jim. Somebody want to second the motion? I'll second it, Tim. Let's call us. Thank you, Collis. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll have a roll call vote on continuing to 527 of 21. Phil? Yes. Barbara? No. Uh, Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. And the chair votes yes. So this is continued to 527, and we will review uh, specific paragraphs that we had questions about tonight, and we can make this uh, very short and take care of it. So thank, thank you, all the folks that called in on this application, and we will be meeting on the 27th to hopefully finalize this. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this concludes our regular. We have one more item. The CIP member request. Other business, Joe? Can you, you hear me? Let's. We have, Tim, we have one more item. The CIP request for membership. Yes, Joanne, can you hear me? Yes. So at the last meeting, uh, we had uh, a person volunteer to be on the CIP committee. And there's there's a, oh, Tim's on the phone, he must be gone, hold on. Hello? Did, did, did you get the same message as before? Hello. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Barbara, are you still there? Yes. Um, Tim's computer went out again, so he wanted you to just finish up this last item. The CIP appointment for a member at large. Yes, so we had a, a request at the last meeting from someone who's interested, and there was a discussion about whether we were able to have an extra member. And I did check on the um, membership, and it says that community members may be, may be serving members. Wait, I'm sorry, let me back up. In addition to these members, which is the representatives from each board, the planning board shall appoint at least three at-large members. So the at-large members are not restricted. However, it does say for a total that would be an odd number. Currently, you have seven people. And if you were to add someone, that would be an even number. So I don't know what you wanted to about this. Uh First thing I want to say is, Sarah, thank you very much. I don't think you have to stay on the line. Have a nice evening. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Jim, did you want to say something on this? Well, we're looking at the rules of the CIP that were made by this board. And that which this board makes, this board can amend. Um, I don't think there's a statutory restriction um, on either membership or number or composition. And, and I could be wrong, but I don't think so. No. We we put a limitation on 
um, numbers, but the way the CIP committee works, it works mostly by discussion and consensus. It, um, the, the risk of a deadlock vote is fairly small. As chair, I'm willing to take that risk if we have somebody <laughs> else to come on. Um, and then the second portion of this is uh, no more than two members of the CIP committee, maybe members of a single governmental body. Does that include um, planning board members? Which it's Kimberly and Gail and me. Gail is an alternate. That's three. Um, now we call full-time members. It'd just be two. Um, we're getting around that by appointing Kimberly and Gail as at-large members. Um, but nevertheless, it's there. I, this is our committee. It's a, an advisory committee to the planning board. So I think we can we can determine who should be on it, and if it should be more it can be more planning board members. I don't object to that. Well, I certainly think we should defer to the committee. Um, I I can't remember the last time there was some danger of. I can't even remember the last time there was a close vote on CIP, quite honestly, though I haven't actually directly served on it in a few years. And if Jim is OK with it, um, do we require a motion to nominate this person as an at-large member? I, 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 I would do two things. One, I would do a motion to amend our rules to permit us to and prove that and then. Why don't we just waive the rules so we don't have to republish our CIP rule book? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, there aren't very many of us left, so I'm just going to make a, a motion to waive uh, the limitation on members as it's currently set in the book for appointments. Of, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the paperwork in front of me. It, Who's the it's, gentleman? It's, it basically says that you need to have an odd number and no, no, no that's what I, I that I was trying to think odd even for odd numbers for purposes mm -hmm. of the appointment tonight of and who's the gentleman who wants to be re appointed his name is Daniel O'Connell and appoint Daniel O'Connell to the CIP committee for the 2022 budget right CIP well, CIP 2022 budget. Yep. Uh, Gail, can you make sense of that babbling motion? I, I can. Not a problem. Is there a second? I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, I'm going to call a roll. The, the acting chair votes yes. Call us. Yes. Dave Pierce. Yes. Gail Lebrack. Yes. James Raymond. Yes. Tim Redmond, are you on? Yeah, I got back in somehow. <laughs> OK. I mean, the computer just went off and went on by itself. Yeah, that's what it sort of does. All right, I need a vote from you, and then I'll hand it back over to you. OK, so the the uh, the motion is passed, right, Barbara? You passed the motion? Yeah, you didn't get my vote. It's Phil. Vote yes. OK, Phil. Sorry. All right, so no the, can I ask why doesn't Phil show up as a participant on the meeting list as a phone number or something? I don't know. He's show, he's calling in using the first light number, which is the number on the agenda, not the number on the team's application invite. That's so, why. OK, well, Thank I you. never got that number. That's why I called for a number. Oh, I gave you the number on the agenda, but if if you if you look at the invite, there's a telephone number on okay. there too, which is then you would show up in the participants list. Okay, Joanne, I have a circle on my computer with MP in it with a hand up. Who is that? Um, I can't see the whole screen because I'm on a laptop. OK, well, you know how the name, everybody's initials is the bottom of the, of the screen in circles and there's MP looking MP. to be recognized and that I don't know who Mark. it is. That was Mark. Uh, that was from the previous 
Yeah, okay. he's gone. Thank you. So he's gone. Okay. All right. So um, does that conclude the discussion on the CIP rules and procedures for membership, Joanne? Yes, it does. And then a recommendation to the select board for the Southern New Hampshire Planning Committee's appointment. Oh. Yeah. Is that for an, um, a non-planning board member to replace Hank um, Boyle? They don't have planning and non-planning. They just have representatives representing the town itself. Um, most times it is a planning board member. Um, so we have, normally we have three regular members and one alternate. Currently we have Barbara, Hank, and David, and I'm the alternate. Hank does not, Hank ex is expiring June 30th, and he does not wish to be reappointed. So I'm asking what you would like to do with this. Well, I'd be open for discussion or opinions from other planning board members, especially Barbara, who's on, on Southern New Hampshire planning. What would your recommendation be, Barbara, to fill the Hank's vacant spot procedurally? Well, I think we need to notice it as a vacancy on the town website and see if anybody applies. Okay, Joanne, that sounds like what we figured we might do. Okay. Okay. And his appointment doesn't end until June 30th, correct? Correct. So we still have time to get that done. Yes. Great. Okay, does anybody have any other business for the board tonight before we um, call this meeting off? No. All right, seeing none, I'll ask Joanne, you. Joanne, can you st Go ahead, Barbara. I was just going to ask, can Joanne, can everybody log off and Joanne stay on for a minute? Because this screen has been awful for me during this meeting and I don't understand what I'm doing wrong and managing it. So sure. I just, if you can just stay on, Joanne, and talk to me. I don't know if we can or whether you have to disconnect it and it will, because it will keep live streaming on Facebook. Um, the TV, someone's phone. The TV station need would need to disconnect. All right, I'll just talk to you another time. I'll okay. I'll talk to you another time. Okay. We that can do a case. Practice. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn is made by Carla, seconded by Phil. I All right. Any discussion on the motion, which I assume is none? And then my have a roll call now. vote, Phil. And now they're up there. Yes. Barbara? Yes. Collis? Yes. Jim? Yes. Gail? Yes. David? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you everyone for attending tonight. Uh, we'll see you at the next meeting.